Hi, welcome to Excel Highway. Today I want to share with you a file that can help you solve a very common problem. You got a group group of people go into a barbecue. Someone pays for the burgers, someone pays for the beers, someone pays for the sodas, someone pays for the fish, etc. etc. Everybody pays a different amount. Some people are allergic to burgers, some people don't drink sodas, and some people eat everything. <laughs> um, usually what the problem is, is to understand who's supposed to pay who, so everybody's balanced, so you don't have one person paying for everyone, you don't have any freeloaders, so to speak. In the um, file that I'm sharing today, I built an expense splitter where you can key in the, uh, the payments, the uh, group payments, who paid for them and who participated. And you automatically and immediately get a recommendation on who needs to uh, pay in order for everybody to be balanced and happy. So, so this is the file. There are four sheets to the file, the main sheet and basically the only one that the uh, the Jew, the user needs to use is the one called payments. In the payments, there's the payment plan that you see over here. This is the result of whatever we have on the right. Then we have all the information that you key in to build this. There's a balance sheet that it's the, uh, let's say the back end part of it, which helps to uh, summarize um, and uh, and show who needs to pay who. There's the auto balance, which basically is the first step and builds all the combinations and understands who needs to pay who. And the list sheet basically that just gives you two options: the name uh, name of the people uh, participating and uh, a V mark for paid, which is used in the payment sheet. So. You only need to use the payment section and only a few parts of it, but I will walk you through how it's calculated because I think there's a lot that you can learn from this. So you can build these sort of things by yourself. So let's start with the data input. There's the payment itself. And as I spoke in the intro, I'm simulating a barbecue. So the different payment, burgers, beer, pickles, whatever. The amount currently in, in US dollars. Who paid for it? And this is the drop down list. And this is coming from the list um, sheet. And you see it's all, actually um, it's on an ABC uh, order. Um, this is, um, I'll show you later on how I do that. And this is automatically uh, calculated. This is how much each person that participated needs to actually pay for it. On the right here is where you key in the names. So whatever names that you key here would be possible for selection and also uh, further in all of the other parts of the sheet. So I have a few names here and for each one, I'm marking if they need to participate or not. If I take it out, you can see that this will change the amount per person, the column data over here, how much they paid, how much you need to participate in and the balance will change. And also the payment plan automatically set, it changed. You see, if I bring it back, then it changes automatically. So all you need to do is key in the name of the person and which of the payments they are involved in. Um, here on top, you have the total page, which is a simple sum if looking at all the payments and checking if the name here equals the name in the paid by. Total participated is another sum if. Here it's looking at the uh, rows where there is a V mark. There's a negative before that because I just want to have it shown as a minus and plus. And the balance is um, the combination or the sum of both. So these are all the formulas here uh, that we have. Um, for example, just so you see, I can add another person. I can add Jim. 
Okay, and so far Jim is not participating in anything, so he does he's not showing up anywhere. But now, since he has participated in the burgers, he's going to owe someone a hundred dollars, and you can see that now they need to pay Emily. I can also make a switch, and now I can select Jim. He wasn't there before, and all of a sudden, people need to pay Jim because he paid for the burgers. Okay, so this is. Everything here is automatic. There's no VBA coding, just some nice formulas um, that I'll show you now how it works. The payment plan, the result, I'm just using offset. Okay, I'm using offset to the balance sheet, to the uh, summarizing sheet. Um, basically, I'm pulling this column and I just want to show the columns that have data. Now, let's take a look. Let's start with the list section. So, how is this? Um, drop down list being pulled automatically. I'm using sort and unique to functions for arrays. Unique, this, um, this uh, function returns unique values. So I'm looking at the unique values over here, which is the uh, core of the, of the file. And this is where it breaks down all the payments. So I'm looking here for this column. This will give me all the names, all the combinations. And I'm using sort. So you can see um, it's sorted alphabetically, which is easier for you to pull the information. These are two functions that require Office 365. So um, if you don't have that, it won't work, but there's other options that we can implement. Let's go to Auto Balance, which basically is the heart of the system. Basically, this is a uh, sheet that looks at all the combinations. So you can see a from to column, okay? There's the uh, uh, the people actually. So, and you can see that um, you can see that uh, what happens is that if I'm using the number of people as a way to understand how many rows I have to fill out to complete a cycle or a combination. So in this case, I have six people. I'm using count a for this row, okay, minus five, because I know I have a, a five, I, I'm starting in column G. So I have six people, which is exactly what I see over here. Um, now, I know that if I reach number six, I wanna restart and start from one until I complete six. So you see these, this one goes one through six, one through six. This one, the two, it's pretty much the same, only it remains the same number until it reaches six. So until this number reaches six, you remain on the same number, and then you skip to the next one. So basically you get all the combinations, in this case, 36. And of course, some of them are, you know, the same person from and to, so they're not, they don't have any meaning, but I don't really care because I just, um, doesn't matter to me. So the transaction column is where I'm trying to um, find the payment rows. The payment rows are the rows where there's a payment between two people. And you can see, basically, I'm using a simple count if for values greater than zero. And every time the value is greater than zero, there's a payment. So there's one, two, three, four, five. And these are going to be showed here. So I'm using index match to capture the data and then a simple concatenate between the the, um, the different uh, columns. So that's the transaction column. The from column, the need to pay, sorry, the from column and two columns is simple. It's offset using these two indexes from here. So it's the number of steps to walk or to pull the uh, the name of the person needs to pay an ode and I'll show this actually here so needs to pay is taking the balance from here from the balance sheet all right what's each person's position and whatever payments they already paid because I want to deduct those ode is the same thing only I'm deducting the payments that were issued to them. So 
in our case you can see that the first four people are they need to pay money and the last two need to receive so that's why there are no payments because all of the people here the two are the people that owe money and we reach Emily so you see Joe needs to pay 190 Emily is owed 239 the payment is the minimum between this number and this number in absolute value because I want to compare apples to apples so this is 190 Joe needs to pay 190 even though Emily is owed 239 the next person is Carol they need to pay 56 and they will pay 49 to Emily so the total is 239 exactly what she's owed next time around when we reach Joe he doesn't owe anything because he already paid Emily and Carol owes only seven which is the difference between what she owed previously and the payment and this is how it's built um, so once this is working in the balance sheet all I need to do is pull the payment using index match I'm using index match um, if you're not familiar with index match is a very nice function that allows you to it's uh, quickly um, pull information from different columns index is where you define the table that you're using and then you use two matches this match is basically finding the value for the first column and the second match is finding the value for the header for the first row and so you get a combination of both of them in this case I want the payment from to and payment columns so payment or transaction number in my case it's over here from to and payment okay and the payment which is what I'm showing in the payment sheet is just a simple using this to concatenate h2 from and the text to pay space i2 is the name to space the amount and USD okay and this is what's being shown here using the offset um, and you see if I take out Jim then automatically um, he's not participating but he's still paid and this is why people are are still still need to pay him but you see everything changed if I change Jim now and give him more um, then he will have to uh, be um, paid but less amount because he also is participating so this was the file um, you have this the main sheet where you change the names um, add a V for whoever's participating and defined the amount the payment and who paid and you get the results the balance sheet and auto balance are automatic you don't need to touch them and also the list um, so hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did please subscribe as I am posting new videos regularly take care